Hi, welcome aboard Freedom uh, with Misty and me. Well, Misty's asleep on the sofa as usual, so you've got just me. And here we are in the UK in yet our third lockdown. So not many boaters are going to be going anywhere very soon. So I thought maybe let's do a bit more baking. Um, yes, Jack Dyer in uh, Florida, maybe you want to switch off because I know you don't really follow all the baking channels. So today I'm just going to do a real fast and easy scones. Um, again, in this country there's a debate whether you call them scones or scones. I call them scones. But I don't care what you call them because I just like them. I'm only doing a plain scone. You can add fruit, um, but I just don't like fruit anymore. So uh, without any more ado, let's get baking. Okay, this is a really easy recipe. Nothing difficult about making scones, other than you've got to remember, try not to beat the air out of them that you're going to put in. So, to start with, we have in this bowl, 500 gram of plain flour, which I'm going to put in the sieve. Now you can use self-raising. Uh, I prefer to use plain. To that, I'm going to add in this bowl, we've got I've already measured out two large tablespoons of caster sugar, two rounded teaspoons of baking powder. Now, if you were using self-raising flour, you wouldn't need to add the baking powder, but obviously I'm using plain. And there's also a level spoon of teaspoon of salt, uh, which always sounds a bit strange, but it does bring out the flavor. So all that just needs to be sieved into the bowl just so we've got no lumps, it helps put a little bit of air in there. Just a nice gentle push it through with your fingers if you want, like I'm going to do now. Uh, we just don't want any lumps. Uh, some caster sugar can be quite lumpy when it's left in the bag. So just squeeze it all through, helps get it all mixed up. It's a very simple recipe and uh, one that's only going to take you a matter of a few minutes to prepare. Now into this we're going to place well, officially you want 110 grams of um, butter. I've got 125 because I just like mine to be buttery. Okay, now get your hands in. Don't be frightened of it. And what we're going to do, we're going to mix these together. And once they start to crumb, then you can be a little bit more gentle because what you're doing as you rubbing the fat and the flowers together you're adding air into that mix and uh, that's what's going to give us a nice light scone if you if you get too heavy handed then obviously the result is you're going to get a very dense mix and your scone will be quite a heavy um, finish and that's not what we want so this is going to take me a few minutes to get down to a crumb stage but as you can see, we're just pushing it between thumbs and fingers and just crumbing it down. Also, it mixes in all them elements of the recipe, the flour, the baking powder, the salt and the sugar. So I'm going to just finish this off into a crumb form and then I'll bring you back to take you to the next stage, which is quite uh, easy. Right, welcome back. So now we have a very fine crumb. And uh, what we need to do now, just find your favorite wooden spoon. I always tend to go for this old spatula. I don't know why, it just seems to be my favorite tool in the, the drawer. Make a well into the middle of your mix. Pour in 300 mils cold milk And then just turn in the bowl, just mix nice and gentle because one thing you don't want to be doing is bashing it because all you're going to do is knock all the air out that we put in when we was rubbing the ingredients together. It's a little bit like um, when you're doing the mix by hand 
it's like when you're making a, a crumble you're just getting it nice and fine and mixing a little bit of air in amongst it once it starts to leave the side of the bowl it wants to be quite quite sticky otherwise you're going to end up with a very dry dry scone so don't let it worry you too much if you think oh it's, it's a bit damp you know it's better to be a little bit too damp than be too uh, too dry there we go so we haven't had to do a great deal of mixing just to get that milk in there just scrape off any excess off your spoon and then what we're going to do we're going to put a sprinkling of flour good sprinkling on this worktop which I have cleaned I always make a point of telling you that because cleanliness when you're baking is a important thing and then we just tip out the actual mix making sure you get all them bits now you don't need a rolling pin because we can push this out by hand nice and gentle now I don't want to make loads and loads and loads of scones out of this so I'm going to keep them quite thick and then using a fluted cutter you can use plain cutter it makes no odds and we're going to use a tray it's got baking sheet on it try to be getting as much of the mix within that cut so you don't have a lot of waste because the more you handle this the heavier the results of the scone is going to be so just try to make sure you get enough to fill your cutter each time As I say, this is really a, a very easy thing to do, and I'm surprised that people tend not to bake their own. And like me, I've done it. I've gone to the supermarket and bought the mass-produced, and they don't taste the same. They really don't. I try not to. Okay, so with the bits we've got left, again, you can reshape it, try to be gentle with it. You know, it's not, uh, it's not difficult, just handle it with a little bit of care. And we should get at least another, at least another couple, maybe a third one. Just get one more. I think this might be might be Misty's. <laughs> she's not really supposed to have one, but she's my taster. And one for Misty. And that's the only little bit of waste we've got. So uh, that's not bad. I'm just going to tidy this area and then uh, we'll get them ready for the oven. Right. Now we've tidied up in this mug. I've just beaten up one egg. Now some people don't glaze the tops of their scones. I just think it's going to give it a nice golden finish when we bake. 
and the egg that's left in this cup ain't going to go to waste because I'll just pop it in a pan with a little drop of milk and it'll make a small amount of scrambled egg to give to a lady ship when she has a supper tonight so again it's not a waste these are going to work out at pennies literally pennies when you make these and um, I can assure you they will taste nicer than they're mass produced and there's something a little bit of, I don't know something very pleasing about having prepared and made your own and it's something this country we tend to be getting away from a lot is home baking although through lockdown and the Great British Bake Off I think it has started to show people that there is a an alternative to going into the supermarket and buying the mass-produced product okay so these and they're all glazed they're going to go into a an oven now you want to be baking these at 400 Fahrenheit 200 C centigrade so in my boat oven I'm going to leave it at 5 gas 5 it's not obviously fan assisted it's going to need about 20 minutes so you go and put the kettle on make yourself a cup of tea I'm going to get some of these pots washed and uh, I'll bring you back when we uh, we're ready to get them out of the oven and show you the results Okay, 20 minutes and we have some absolutely beautiful scones. They smell gorgeous. Just going to put them on a cooling rack for now. Let's let them go nice and cold. And I'm going to take Misty out for a walk when I get back I'm going to make a cup of tea, cut one of these bad boys open, lather it in butter and enjoy it and it's as easy as that. Baking isn't really difficult. The difference between a lot of people and qualified bakers is, as I've said this before is the confidence. Give it a go you know work with things that are simple like the shortbread recipe I did and like this scone recipe very very easy you've got the ingredients in your cupboards and your fridge literally preparation time is less than five minutes and 20 minutes to cook so it's not a lengthy process I do hope that this has inspired you to give scones or scones a try these would be lovely with some nice butter, some strawberry jam and some cream and that will then get you into another topic of do you put the cream on before the jam or the jam on before the cream and you know something if you've got a lovely scone it really doesn't matter which way you do it they'll be absolutely gorgeous so as I say I'm going to take Misty now for a walk and when I get back I'm going to have one of these bad boys with some butter thank you for watching I do hope it's inspired you to get baking and uh, maybe even Jack Dyer will get his penny on, get a bag of flour out at cupboard and give it a go. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and I'll catch you again. Take care, bye bye.